Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan, artist of CG Sketch. Today I'm going to take a look at Chaos Vantage. A nice little piece of software by Chaos Group recently released. It used to be called Project Lavina. Chaos Group, of course, we know is the makers of V-Ray and Corona. And with this software, they allow you to import your V-Ray projects and visualize it in real time using your um, RTX capable uh, video card. So as long as you have an RTX capable video card, you should be able to use this software. It's free for the time being, so you could uh, download it until June 2nd, 2021 and play with it. And it seems to be pretty interesting. I mean, if you look at um, what they promise here in their homepage, you see a video of this city that's been transferred over and there's trees and tons of detail and it seems to have been rendered in what appears to be product production quality and it looks pretty, pretty good. So I've been playing with it for a while. It seems to be pretty simple. With one click, you could transfer over your files and visualize it in real time. And I personally have not found it useful to create final production quality value, but I found it really, really, really useful for previews, particularly in animations. And uh, let's go check it out. Let's go check out how I use it. So when creating animations, I'm sure most of, most of you guys usually create some kind of preview, some kind of storyboard to present to the client so that they could take a look at the uh, the storyboard, the camera movements before you render out the scenes. Um, and usually uh, this is done many, many ways. The way I've usually done it is um, recording the, the viewport. So I'll go to tools and I'll go to preview, grab viewport and create preview animation. And this allows me to record the, what I, whatever I see in the viewport and I'll grab this recording and, and I create a, a video of it. And usually that worked pretty well, but the results were just that recordings of viewports, we would see basically just the the colorless wireframes of the objects. And it was just to give an idea to the client so that they understand how the camera was going to move and how the story of the animation was going to unfold. And that worked pretty well. But now with um, Project Vantage, we can use that instead to create the previews. And that's how I've been using it primarily. And I find it pretty, pretty useful. So here I have a simple scene where the camera just pans uh, vertically going down. And instead of using the recording of the viewports, let's go ahead and use Vantage and see how that works. So I have here the Vantage buttons already installed in my menus. If you want to do that, if you haven't done it yet, um, you could just go to customize and you go to menus, find your category for uh, Chaos Vantage and you'll see buttons here the uh, appropriate buttons you just drag and drop them over to the menu so i have here start stop the live link to chaos vantage and i have another one called export and send the current animation range so in this case since what i want to export is the camera of movement which i've already set up in max i have the, the camera moving here it's 96 frames i'm using 24 frames per second so it's just a couple seconds worth of footage so i'm going to use this button instead, export and send the current animation as a VR scene to Chaos Vantage. So when you click on that, it'll it'll handle the rest. It creates a VR scene and it uh, automatically transfers all the assets over. The uh, Vantage screen pops up and it starts loading. So it doesn't take but a minute or so to load depending on the complexity of the project. So I'll give it a minute to do that. And once it's loaded, I will come back. Okay, and so here it is. The project has been loaded. As you can see, we get a glimpse of what I modeled and uh, had running on, on Max within Vantage. And now it is being rendered specifically and exclusively through my video card. Um, so, I mean, right away, it looks pretty good, kind of dark, but uh, we notice a few things. We see that um, the correct number of frames have been imported. So it's just around four seconds worth of footage at 24 frames per second. And you'll find a couple of buttons all along menus that are pretty simple to use. Uh, there's plenty of other videos that explain how to use these. You could go ahead and uh, walk around your walk around your project if you so desire. Um, you can move items. You could play with the camera at post production. You have here uh, options to mess with your lighting, to mess with some of your materials and objects. Um, but in this case, all I'm interested in is the uh, creation of this scene, the storyboard that I want to 
show my client, right? So I want to just render out the scene. I don't want to mess with the camera. I don't want to mess with the movement. I just want to be able to render out these frames and create a, a bit of a preview at somewhat better quality than quality than I normally would have had if I would just be recording my viewport as I normally and traditionally did. So let's take a look. Right now the rendering is paused. Let's go ahead and unpause that by clicking this button. So right now it's rendering. I'm getting about just under four frames per second. Uh, now, of course, remember that I'm also recording my screen, so that hogs up a couple, of, a little bit of the resources. But the video card I use is the uh, 1080 Ti, a uh, fairly good video card, a little bit dated, about three years old. So the newer video cards will probably get you some better performance. Now, this is a pretty intense scene. I have a lot of lighting, a lot of refraction and reflection. And um, as you could tell, it's a bit dark, so right away, one simple way to fix that, we can increase the exposure here. So if I just go to this slider and move it to the right, uh, the scene can be lightened up a bit. I had some some post on Max is a frame buffer and V-Ray frame buffer. So I just mess with the exposure here and I get a little bit more illuminated scene. We have the denoiser here that can uh, you could toggle and play with if you want a little bit more noise, a little bit less noise at the, the cost of uh, some quality and some uh, some uh, resources. Now, let's go ahead and see how the movement of the camera imported. And as you could tell here, when I drag the slider on the um, on the time on the timeline below, it seems to have imported well. Yep. So you see the camera animation path imported well at four frame at four seconds long, 24 frames per second. Let's go ahead and I guess let's add a lookup table. I have these lookup tables here. Uh, this one's a bit bright. Let's change it to linear. Lower the highlight burn like I normally would do within the V-Ray -ray frame buffer. Let's make it 0.3. All right, let's drop the look of table a bit. Since it's brighter, it's also killing the quality a little bit. So let's make it 0.7 or so. All right, so now we have a little bit more lighting and I'm ready to record this footage to add it to my storyboard. So how do we do that? So all we have to do we have here on the side, we have the render button, similar as the one with the teacup is the way we see it on uh, overall max. So when we click on that, let's go ahead and pause the real time rendering and let's go to the render button and you'll see this render sequence uh, pop up and it uh, allows you to select the resolution. Right now I have it set for 720p and I like that. You could render a little bit higher if you want or a little bit lower depending on uh, on what, whatever quality you want to present to your client uh, when you're presenting the storyboard. We have keep the noiser on. I want to keep it that way. Motion blur. You could keep that as well if you so desire. Now the samples. Samples is going to determine the quality of your rendering at the cost of more time rendering, of course. In this case, since we're only doing a simple storyboard for the client to see the the Prog the progress of the camera, we don't need that high of a sample count. I think the default is 100. I've lowered it to 20. If you want more, you could raise it to 100, 200, 1,000. You could play with this number and, and depending on how long it takes on your computer, determine how far you want the, how much quality you want in your images. Uh, now, I've actually noticed that keeping the samples low allows the, denoi the denoiser to work a little better. Now it does come out to be a little blurry, but it just, it just happens to be a little cleaner than when you put the samples higher, higher and then you just have, would just have to wait the longer amount of time to, uh, for the image to render out to the sample count. So let's keep it at 20 for now. I found that it works well for, for this uh, sequence. Frames per second, 24, you just adjust that to whatever uh, frames per second your original footage was scaled at. Camera type perspective, Output file types, PNGs, that's how it's going to be saved. And if you click save as default, it'll save these settings so that every time you do this, click this button, it'll have these settings. I already done that, so I don't need to do it. So we're ready. Let's go to start. 
uh, and then it'll just allow you to select what folder you want to save your uh, your scene so let's call it tutorial and it'll automatically number the images so that's all we need to do and now it's gonna it's gonna go ahead and proceed so as you see here it's rendering scene by scene or frame by frame rather and it's fairly quick each frame is taking but a couple of seconds I have uh, 96 frames to, to render so it shouldn't take but a couple of minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, let you guys know more how much or how long it took more or less and we'll see the result okay and here we go uh, all the frames have been rendered 96 in total it took just under five minutes to render this scene so overall not bad let's go ahead and import these into um, After Effects and see what it looks like so I mean you could use whatever video editing software you use so I'll use um, After Effects 720p new composition 24 frames per second four seconds long everything's right I'm gonna go ahead and import the footage uh, here it is and uh, make sure it's set at 24 as well so zoom frame rate of 24 all right and here it is okay so right away you could see what's going on yes it is noisy um, there's a lot of noise there's a lot of um, artifacts but hey I mean this was rendered in under five minutes not bad and you and there was no no need to tinker with anything it was just literally drag and drop the file over to um to vantage and hit the render button essentially so not bad it gives you a good idea of what's going on and um and like i said i mean at least this way the the client and you as the artist you get the uh concept the gist of what's going on in a much more detailed way than you would with otherwise just recording the um the viewport like I tradi traditionally used to do here it is the sample again of the viewport uh, being recorded to create the storyboard not a lot of detail just the basic uh, massing versus something that was created in Vantage the same project here it is something I did and this is uh again this was rendered in probably less than 15 minutes altogether which is not bad when you think of the fact that I just drag and dropped it and it gives you an idea of what the final product is going to look like gives you an idea of of um of the lighting and you get a uh any you know any warnings as to potential problems or or, or items you might have missed in a much more detailed manner than you would by just recording the viewport so overall not bad guys i really like this software and of course that's not the only use i mean you can also use it to to walk around if you you know just hit this button here and um and you desire you could actually walk around the project which is pretty good again this is remember this is just dragged and dropped directly from max no need to tinker with any of the materials or lights or anything and it gives you a good idea of what's going on you're essentially walking around the project i mean i know i know a lot of clients will potentially love this possibility and it gives you again the artist uh, a general sense of the space so lots of good potential here guys i really like this uh this software and it's uh it'll be interesting to see what's going on of course like i mentioned earlier the faster your um your video card the faster or the better performance you're going to get so i hope you enjoyed this uh tutorial on uh, creating storyboards using vantage that's one of the main uses i've been giving it let me know below if you have uh, other uses for it and uh, if you have any questions of course and as usual thank you guys so much for watching